Hi everyone, good evening. How are you guys doing? Happy Embroidery Friday. How are you? Hey Renee, Lakeisha, hey Crafty, Rhea, Robin, hey Miss Wade, Donna Bell. And so I'm not gonna start right away because usually a lot of people start to get in there. So I'm here with the uh, with Mello and stuff, because I'm here on my own tonight and stuff. Um, the men bailed out on me, so I have no sitter for the dog, right? So you're going to be good, right? I got cheese. All right, so hopefully Mello behaves and stuff. Hey, Agent. Hey, Stephanie. So I thought for this Friday, what we could do is we could talk about, um, you know, uh, what are we talking about? Oh shoot, I forgot about <laughs> I forgot our topic today. I know our embroidery hour, I think it was um buying embroidery files and supplies and all that stuff. So the places that I go. So because I do have um the paperwork and stuff, but I forgot what I titled this video. So ain't that something? Oh, you fell asleep. Okay, good. So anyway, um you know, let's start because um, I got a lot of info and I'm not going to talk too fast. I'm going to try not to talk as fast as uh, because you guys may want to start writing down some of this stuff. OK, um, let's see. Let, where am I going to start? OK, let's talk about embroidery files. OK, um, you know. Of course, you know, without an embroidery file, you can't embroider. Right. Because it's all about, you know, um, getting designs to make things, you know, putting people's names on it. You got to buy the embroidery file fonts. You got to buy the embroidery file designs and all that stuff. So there are so many places that you can go to to actually buy different um, embroidery files. They have some that are, you know, like very, very detailed. They, and it depends on what it is that you're looking for. A lot of folks look for stuff for kids. Right. And um, I'm not much into the kids stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll do a couple and I'll do a couple of shirts and stuff like that. Um, I just think that's very like it's, it's a very saturated area to me, you know. So it's just kind of like, you know, when I look at when people are selling kids stuff, I feel like everybody's like lowballing each other. Right. So it's like it gets to the point where the price is so low that you're making the item and you're not actually getting anything for it, right? It's so it's it's like I, I don't know if, if I want to play in that game too much. So when it comes to the kids stuff, I'll do a couple, but I don't really like to focus on that area. So I kind of try to go more on the adult side and stuff. So um which is why I like the kitchen towels and the dinner napkins and kind of like home decor. So that's really my area and stuff. So um, where do I get my embroidery files? Okay, well, I like to go to Etsy and get the embroidery files from there. One of the things that I really like about Etsy is that I find that their embroidery files are very affordable. And um, one of the things that I like to do too is I always, before I buy a file, I like to read the reviews of that shop. Because one of the things that I'm looking for when I am reading those reviews is I want people to um, say something about the stitching. You know, um, what did the file stitch well? Okay, because you got to remember there's a lot of people that are probably new to digitizing. And sometimes, you know, they're doing their best, but sometimes, you know, they can stitch a file incorrectly and it can be very dense or um, there's a lot of spacing and it's not really filled correctly. So a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm, when I'm reading those reviews, I'm trying to look for, you know, the, if someone comments on the quality of the stitch. And I also like to see if um, someone has, when they posted a review, if they go and they put a picture of a file that they bought from that shop and you can actually see how it's stitched out. You know, if the um, if the the design is very very dense, it could cause a lot of puckering, and that means that if it's very very dense, you may have to put extra stabilizer in it so that you can prevent the puckering. So there's a lot of things that I kind of look for, you know, when um, I'm shopping for embroidery files. 
But I do like to go to Etsy. I always like to search and I usually just search a topic of the embroidery file that, that I need. And then what I'll do is, you know, I look to see what's out there because I just feel that when I go to Etsy, I'm supporting, you know, some other small business owners like myself. And at the same time, they are very affordable. I mean, they're not asking for an arm and a leg, right? So, you know, I, I kind of like doing that. Um, another favorite of mine, which was actually introduced to me by someone in our Facebook group, is um, embroiderylibrary.com. Um, I like them because when I search and I look at their designs, they are very classical. I mean, they're very like formal designs and stuff. And I really, really liked it. Like last year, someone had posted um, a Christmas mouse. And I fell in love with that. And I embroidered it and I put it in the, in the kitchen towel and, you know, I put it on my shop. Didn't sell not one of them, but I'll tell you what, it was in my kitchen and I loved it. So, <laughs> so I was like, that's okay, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I liked, I really like their, their designs because I just feel that they're very classical looking. Um, the only downside that I see about that side is their designs can get kind of pricey, okay? And I think it's because maybe I'm accustomed to paying the Etsy prices for embroidery files, but they are good quality files, okay? So I have paid um, like $5 to $8 for one embroidery file. And it's, and you know, usually when I pay that much, it's because I really like that design and maybe that's something that I even want for myself or for a family member or something like that. But um, they have really, really, really nice files. So I would recommend going there. You know, if you're looking for um, an embroidery design, something for like home decor, like a pillow or, you know, um, you know, uh, this is something else, you know, that, that came to my mind too. You know, I think my husband probably got scared when I first bought, bought my embroidery design because he made a comment when I bought my Cricut maker, right? And I found out how to do decals. He goes, oh Lord, we're going to have labels on everything in the house now. Because, you know, at my pantry, I put pantry, then I put laundry. So he's like, I'm going to walk around with, <laughs> with a sign on my forehead with my name, you know? So anyway, so it's the same thing with my embroidery machine, which is, it's true. I, I mean, he's got a point because, you know, the thing is you like to embroider. So I do walk around the house sometimes and I look at stuff and then I go, oh, I can embroider that. That would look cute, you know? And then sometimes I look at our pillowcases and I'm thinking, oh, it'd be nice to put our initials on the pillowcases or do a Mr. and Miss, um, you know, the, um, you can, uh, you know, now I'm giving you guys ideas about stuff you can embroider. Um, the bread, the bedspread, you can put on the bedspread. You can embroider something really nice on it and stuff. So, you know, it's just you know, I I look for designs that I know I could use for home decor. So I'm more on the home decor kind of side. You know, my kitchen towels, my dinner napkins, and stuff like that. Now. I know there is um, a kid, like I said, kids are a big, big thing, okay? You know, a lot of people doing the big, the birthday shirts, a lot of people are doing the baby gowns, they're doing the onesies, um, they're doing the um, the baby blankets. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting for my cousin to pop, she's, she's expecting a, a baby in like two weeks and stuff, so as soon as she pops, I want to embroider a um, baby template on the canvas, um, you know, on a painting canvas. So I'm gonna do that. And when I do that, I'll videotape it so you guys can see what, um, you know, how I did it. Um, I'm actually going to buy the template from Designs by Juju. If you go to that website, they're very like, they have a lot of designs, a lot of appliques, and they have those birth templates too. So I'm gonna be going over there and I'm gonna be um, picking out, I haven't picked it out yet, but I do want to pick out a birth template. And that's usually a template. It's real cute. It has the kid's name on it, how many pounds they weighed, the date that they were born, and the time. 
And I think their their height and you know and their weight and all that stuff. So you know, I thought that would be really really cute and stuff. I should do one for my son, even though now he's going to turn twenty one this year. But eh, you know, <laughs> put it in his room. So anyway, um, that's a you know, designs by Juju is another one. If you if you're into the kids stuff and everything, that that's a good place to go. Um, another one that I really liked, and it was actually the first place I ever bought my very first embroidery um, file, which I learned a lot. And one of the things that I like about them is because when I first got my SC1900, you know, when you're first embroidering, I mean, let's be honest, you, really, you it's confusing, okay? There's a lot of things you got to learn, um, you know, all you, you know, it's, it's, you learn about stabilizer, the different threads, and then you have to learn about embroidery. And it, it can get kind of daunting, right? Um, I went to um, embroiderydesigns.com. And that's when I learned the hard way about formats of embroidery files and size, paying attention to that. Um, I bought a file, it was the wrong format, and then it was also the wrong size. <laughs> it was bigger than a five by seven. So because it was bigger than a five by seven, when, you, when I downloaded it on my flash drive and I put it in the USB port, it, the machine did not read it because it has to actually fit in a five by seven or you know, um, smaller in order for the SC1900 to read the file. So the customer service was really, really good. I mean, you know, I was writing them back and forth saying, hey, I really want this design, but I just, I, I got the wrong one. Um, and that's another thing too, um, you know, that, that I wanna mention is when you're buying embroidery files from certain websites, you're only allowed to buy a specific uh, format, right? So I know like uh, my girlfriend, Robin, she uses Viking. She has a Viking embroidery machine and her form, her file format, if I believe, if I remember correctly, is a HUS, it's H-U-S. Um, with Brother, they use P-E-S. Um, I don't know what Melco uses or um, the Rokomas and all the other um, embroidery machines, but I didn't, I, I did not buy the PES file and I did not buy the correct um, size. So I learned the hard way, right? But it really wasn't that hard because they were very, very, um, you know, they were very uh, friendly and then they were able to go ahead and, um, you know, help me get the right file and get the right size. So, I mean, thumbs up to embroiderydesigns.com because they, I, you know, they didn't have to do that. You know, a lot of, a lot of times when you buy a digital file, they're kind of like, oh, too bad, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know, you should have known, you know, but no, they, the lady was really, really nice. She was like, this is the file you want. I'm like, yeah. And then she, she just shrunk it for me and she sent it to me in the right, in the right uh, format and the right size. So, I mean, to me, um, and, and they were nice, you know, so. I like them. Um, embroiderydesigns.com also has sales. And that's another thing. When you go to a lot of these embroidery websites, you can sign up, create an account. And then what they'll do is they will send you um, notifications when they have sales. And I think that's like really, really cool. Um, you know, uh, excuse me, woman, my son is... Um, he wants to know if there's food in the house and no, there is no food in the house. So he's going to have to go by. So, um, uh, kids, teenager, he knows eight o'clock is my embroidery. Well, he's not a teenager anymore. He turned, he's going to be 21. Let me just put no. Sorry guys. All right. There you go. Okay. He's got his no. All right. So, um, oof, I always get distracted. All right. If it ain't the dog, it's the kid. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, always sign up because what they'll do is they'll send you sales and stuff. And then sometimes they have free embroidery files also. Um, you know, sometimes the, the embroidery files are nice that they offer for free. Others are kind of like, eh, it's okay. You know, but, um, you know, because of course, you know, the good stuff they want you to pay for, you know, but um, they're pretty good, you know. So um, Embroidery Designs is one of them. Embroidery Boutique is another one that I have used. Um, it tried designs by Little B. 
Designs by Little B is very, very big on the kids' side as well. And they do like a lot of appliques and stuff like that. Now, that is one thing that I will say. Applique files, I love doing applique. I think applique is really, really fun. And what I like about applique is you're really not using as much thread as you normally would in a regular full-blown embroidery file. With a full-blown embroidery file, there is no fabric. It's all just strictly all thread, okay? So you're talking about embroidery files can go from 5,000 to maybe 40 or even more per uh, thousands of stitches, right? But with applique, what they, you know, what they do is they there's a space in your design that you can fill it up with fabric. You can use glitter, heat vinyl transfer. Um, now they have something called embroidery um, vinyl. It, and to me, it's kind of like, I don't know. I, I have to buy a sheet because I, I really want to see what the difference is because I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I think people just make stuff just to make stuff, you know, but because <laughs> to me, it's like it's got to have a specific purpose. So I, I've never done embroidery vinyl because I've always used the heat transfer vinyl and I've always used fabric and those have always served the, the purpose for me. Um, and when I've looked at um, the selection for embroidery vinyl, I, I just don't see it as a huge selection. So it's just not something that I kind of, you know, I did look at it, but it wasn't something that I was just like, oh, I got to try that. You know, it didn't really um, pop out at me as something that was like, oh, you know, worth to do. But maybe one day I'll just, you know, buy a sheet just to see what what is all what is all the the bells and whistles about and stuff if they have any bells and whistles i don't know but anyway one of the like i was saying with appliques one of the things that i that that i notice is a lot of the applique designs are really geared towards children right and one of the things that i kind of wish is they had more applique designs that were not really geared for kids you know um I do notice that when I look for designs for my kitchen towels, sometimes they'll have designs that have like little fruits on them. Um, but you know, it's, it's it. But I, I don't, I don't like the designs. It just didn't look like you know. It wasn't like wow, you know. It just didn't look you know. So I mean, I have not been able really to find applique designs that that popped out on me on the adult side of things. Now they got adorable ones for kids, but they, I just have, they haven't seen anything for home decor and stuff like that. So um, let me see, I'm going down my list because I have a list of websites that I have gone to that I really, really like. Um, okay, I mentioned Designs by Little B, very, very good with um, for kids. Um, embroidery Boutique is another one that's, that's pretty good. Embroidery Designs, I've mentioned that. Um, Let's see. I also, oh, Stitchtopia, stitchtopia.com, my favorite. And I'm going to tell you why it's my favorite. That is really my place to go when I'm looking for fonts. I mean, they have so many nice fonts. And one of the things that I like is that they have BX fonts. Now, when we're talking about fonts, I recently did a video on, um, what happens if you know if you you don't have in brilliance right and you 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 know are you like out of luck do you have to like use the fonts that come with the brother SE 1900 no you're not you know you can go ahead and you can buy the fonts in a PES format the only thing is like i demonstrated in that video if you do if you do go that way it's a little more time consuming and it's it's a little more tedious but it's doable OK, it is doable. So you're not like screwed or anything like, oh, my God, I got to buy the software. No, it's not true. Um, now, the thing is also is one of the things that you have to be careful with also is make sure you always buy the format that you want when you're buying an embroidery file. And I'm going to tell you why, because I screwed up on this. OK, I had in brilliance and instead of buying a BX file. I was buying a PS file. So it's not like I lost my money. I can still use it, but I can't import 
the whole alphabet into the software. So whenever I want to use that particular um, style of font, I have to open each letter individually, just like if I didn't have it brilliant. And then I would have to create the file and then save it on a USB and then take it over to my machine. So I hope I'm making sense to you guys. And if, if not, then you can replay the video and stuff. But I'm trust me, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm telling you the steps right. And you can also watch that video when I talk about um, the PES fonts and stuff. So um, Stitchtopia is a really, really good place to go. They have sales too. And one of the things that I do like also is they have bundles. So in other words, um, for a certain amount you know, of money, you can buy like 10 different styles of fonts, right? And, and you get to see what type of fonts they are, you know, scripts and all that stuff. And they got some really, really, really pretty ones, you know? Now, one of the things though that I do notice sometimes when you buy certain fonts is when you're looking at the font and you're ready to buy it, it always looks pretty, right? And then when I buy it and like, let's say there's a particular name that I, I have to, you know, that I, that I need to put in the file. Not all fonts look great in a certain name, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, like, like, you know, Let's say the name Elizabeth, right? Um, let's say it, it, you do script, um, the way they do the E, or even the, the way they, they do the J for Jeanette. Sometimes it looks okay. Sometimes it looks really funky. You know, so not to me, it's like I, I quickly learned not all fonts are, you know, are, are great for every name and, and every word, you know? So sometimes it's like you have to type out what you want to say, and then look at it with different fonts to see what makes it more, you know, more appealing, you know? So it's just something I want to put out there because there have been times when I bought fonts and then I think this is a font that's going to work. And then when I type a person's name, it's like, it didn't look good. It, 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 did, it doesn't look really nice and stuff like that. So I'm just like, okay, this isn't going to work. And then I have to, you know, look for another font and stuff. So just something to, to think about and stuff when you're, when you're making designs and everything. So let me see what other ones I have here. Hold on. Cause I marked a whole lot. Oh yeah. Okay. Here's one. Um, it's called, um, apex embroidery. Apex embroidery is also a good one. And also um, one of the things about Apex is if you need uh, a file to be digitized, they do digitizing too. Now, I do notice though, they're a little on the pricey side. Um, I think, because I remember someone reached out to me a while ago and they were looking to digitize a file. And I'm not a digitizer, okay? Digitizing is not my thing. That's a lot of work. Okay. I mean, I was, I met my girlfriend for drinks last night and I was just explaining to her about, you know, how people can, you know, take an image and they have to design an embroidery file from scratch. I mean, you are literally drawing out every stitch and you really have to have a very good understanding about what an underlay stitch is, what a running running um, running stitch is, and a satin stitch. I mean, you really have to learn how to really uh, maneuver because actually, you know, when you're digitizing a file, you're telling a machine exactly how to draw out the um, you know the design, um, you know, step by step by step. So I just don't have it in me to um, I you know believe me, I have. I, you know, I've taken some classes and stuff and I do have some kind of understanding, but it's just not my cup of tea. I mean, my whole thing is I like, I prefer to buy embroidery files and um, I like to make modifications to them. Um, for instance, I have a towel and it has like the little, um, the cup, you know, the, the Mora thing. I don't know how you say that thing. It's the cup with the little... Thing and you hammer it. My mom uses it to to smash the garlic whenever she's making fenin. You know, um, 
well, uh, you know, I took that and then I took a, the Puerto Rican flag and then I just overlaid it and then I saved it to make sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, um, going to be too dense, right? So you have to like take out some of the stitches from underneath. So that way the Puerto Rican flag can lay flat on the towel. And, um, so I like to do that kind of stuff. I like to make modifications to designs. Okay. Um, I don't like to, to, to stitch out and create embroidery files from scratch. I just don't have the patience. It's just not my thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, and then, um, I kind of laughed a little bit cause I have not gone to this place. Um, but there, I saw there's a website called JJ's, um, applicates. So I remember me and my girlfriend, we, we, we wanted to start a business venture and we did JJ's jewelry, you know, and, uh, we used to drink wine and bead all the time and everything, but that business didn't really go anywhere cause we drank more than we beaded. So it didn't work for us. So anyway, um, you know, but I kind of cracked up when I saw that and I'm going to check them out. Um, but I'm sure they probably, and it's probably my guess, you know, if it's appliques, a lot of times, like I said, when I see applique files, I see them mostly geared towards children. So I'm just like, eh, okay, you know, it's all right. Um, and see, um, that's about, let me see what else I have here. Okay. I did mention, uh, okay. Designs by little B. The itch to stitch has been another good one. I have purchased a couple of things from them as well. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, one of the things that I, I need to mention also is embroiderydesigns.com. Um, if you are looking for fonts that are BX, um, that is the place where I made the mistake. Um, I bought fonts and I thought it was a BX format, but it was a PS format. Um, just make sure that when you're there, you're, you're really, you got to really read. Um, you know, they're not automatically all BX. I mean, in borderydesigns.com, some of their fonts are come in the BX format and some of them don't. They just come, you know, in all the different embroidery uh, designs format. So, you just got to be really, really careful and stuff. That is one thing I, I really, truly learned that when it comes to um, embroidery files, I before I hit that purchase button, I make sure that I really read it. I make sure that I, I, I know exactly what um, what I'm, I'm buying. Um, there is um, some Etsy. There's an Etsy shop that I, I also wanted to um, tell you guys about. They are two that has, they have become kind of my favorites. One is called Embroidery Land and they're on Etsy. And the other one is Marsha Embroidery. Okay. Now let me tell you about Marsha Embroidery. I like this shop a lot. And I'm going to tell you why. I mean, her files are like a dollar, a dollar fifty and nice designs. This is one of her designs that I got. And it's, it's this one that I did with the dinosaur and, and this was like a dollar and she's always had sales and stuff like that. So, I mean, I have to be honest. I mean, this is, it's, it's nice for a buck. I mean, this is really, really cute. You know, you can put this on a, on a onesie, which I've had. I think I, I did this for, um, for my cousin's, uh, baby that's coming. I think I put this on a onesie for her. Um, Maybe wrong. I don't know. I don't remember. I keep making stuff and sending it to her, but they're like a dollar. So to me, you know, embroidery files, that is, that is, I'm going to be honest. That's one of the reasons why I like going to Etsy because I feel like when I go to Etsy and I'm buying the embroidery um, files from them, um, I'm actually, um, you know, getting, uh, I feel like I'm getting more for my money. You know what I'm saying? And this is the other thing too. When you go, when you go to some of these um, websites and you go and you buy the embroidery file, right? Like uh, embroiderydesigns.com, right? They're very particular about the format that you are asking for. So when I go and I buy a file from them and I tell them that I need it to be within a five by seven, you know, I buy the one that's a five by seven and it's a PS. That's all I get. I just get the five by seven. That's a PES and they got my money. When you go and you, and I notice I buy from Etsy 
I'm getting the whole package. I get a zip file. And in the zip file, it has the PS, it has, it has all the other types of embroidery formats. And what I like about that is, you know, what happens if you want to switch machines? That's the thing that goes through my mind. Because as you guys know, you know, in certain videos, I am going to I'm going to be in a hunt for my third embroidery machine probably by the end of this year. Okay. And I still don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to stick with a brother. I may end up getting a Melco or I may be getting, um, I think there's another one that I was looking at, the one that John Deere is, is um, using. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to probably look at that. So I don't know what machine I'm going to end up with at the end. So the thing that crosses my mind is, let's say I decide I don't want a brother. Okay, I'm going to go for Melco. Now, I don't know what Melco uses. Um, I know Harmony would know. There it is. Harmony put it. Yep, the ZS, um, X, XS, ZSK, ZSK, okay. Man, that was a tongue tire. So anyway, <laughs> um, you know, every machine uses its own format, right, for the embroidery file. So what has gone through my mind is I'm kind of like, okay, I, you're investing. You're spending a lot of money on these embroidery files. And, you know, it's like you buy them and you're, you're using them. And what happens if if I if I if I say okay I don't want a brother machine um, I want to do Melco or I want to buy the um, ZSK Z ZSK right they use a whole different uh, format but because I purchased some of these embroidery files from some of these websites and they only delivered that PS that means I'm out of luck. OK, unless, though, what I could do is I can use that and I can pop open it up in a brilliance and then I can save it. In that other format, you know, that's another reason why it's good to get embroidery software. OK, I'm not saying you have to buy in brilliance, but what I'm saying is, you know, that's another benefit of, of getting um, embroidery software, because if I don't if you don't have it, then what happens is. All those embroidery files that you bought, you can't use them because I can't just I can't take my PS file and plug it into a Viking or, you know, in a Melco or and it's going to work. It doesn't happen that way. So it's just something for you to all um, think about, you know, um, you know, it's just something for you to think about. Oh, I just saw that Harmony says Malcolm used. Oh, see, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Uh, she says the Melco. She has a Melco, and she says I guess it uses all the formats, which that's good. But you know, not all machines are like that. <laughs> you know, some machines are very particular, right? So that's just something to think about. And I'm gonna be honest, that's one of the reasons why I kind of like it when I buy from the Etsy shops because I, you know, you you get the whole package. So you know, even though I'm only using the PS, I have them. And if I ever come across that I have to use another type of machine and it doesn't, you know, have P, you know, doesn't read PS, I have the other file formats there, you know, ready for me to, to, to use. So that's just something to think about. It was just something that just, just popped in my head right now. Okay, so um, one of the things, though, you know, like I said, reading reviews, you should always read the reviews because always, you know, you, you want to make sure that it stitches right and all that kind of stuff. So I did match that. All right. Let me talk to you guys a little bit about supplies and stuff um, and getting the supplies. Um, I, I posted on Facebook because someone was asking. Um, I have a video that I had did about getting a cricket, cricket maker at a cheaper price, right? Now, in that video, I talk about, you know, um, how you, you know, how I use, they used to be called Ebates. Now, I still can't say the name, okay? It's Rakatan something, okay? But it's like a cashback program, right? So what I liked about that, okay, is that I don't just use it to get my embroidery supplies. I also use it when I'm going to go out to dinner and all that kind of stuff because it's it's a way for you to get discounted gift cards and all and all that kind of stuff. And you get cash back if you buy online, use their links. So um, 
a lot of times I like to use them when I am buying my supplies from Michaels. Now, you know, I am not a, a Hobby Lobby fan because, you know, like I, I like I said before, they don't offer military discount. They don't do the teacher's discount. And sometimes they get a little funky with their little coupons and all that kind of stuff. I'm a browser. I'm a, I, I consider myself a Hobby Lobby browser. And because I, I suffer from cheapism, you know, um, if there's no coupon that I can't use, I'm not going to get my 15% military discount, then usually, you know, I like to keep my money. So a lot of times things that you see in Hobby Lobby, you really can't find them in Michael's or some other place, you know. Now, you can get discounted um, gift cards to Hobby Lobby, too, you know, but it's just, I don't know, it's just my thing. I'm just not a Hobby Lobby fan. That's, that's all it is. I mean, it's nothing to get some sorry Hobby Lobby, but it's just that I, I like to browse your store, but you know, when it comes to my money and stuff, I just don't, hmm, it's not for me. Okay. So anyway, um, I just thought I wouldn't mention that, but if you are a teacher and, um, you know, your spouse is retired military or you're in the military, you're active, retired, whatever, you have your ID, you go to Michael's, you get 15% off. Okay, so, you know, I like going to Michael's. So usually what I'll do, though, but to, you know, when I go to Michael's, what I usually do is I like to buy it online because I like to get the cashback link. And then I do the curbside pickup and I still get my military discount. And I always buy a discounted gift card to Michael's. So it's, you know, I, I kind of explained the whole process, how I do it when I got my Cricut Maker. So it's basically that process is what I use whenever I'm buying my embroidery um, stuff, you know, from um, Joann's or um, Michael's. I always go through that route because that's how I, I, I like the cash back and stuff like that. And like I said, you know, I am I'm cheap. You know, I don't I don't like to spend money like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's it's like, uh, you know, um, let's talk about fabrics. Um, I like to go to Joann's. Um, I also like to go to my local sewing shop. One of the things that I like about local sewing shops is them, they, they have unique fabrics. When you go to Joann's, you know, it's like every Joann has the same fabric. Now, they have lots of fabric. They got lots of choices to, to you know, to pick. But if you go to, if you were to walk into these small, you know, uh, mom and pop sewing shops, you're going to notice, because I, I have, is that some of the fabric that they carry, it's not the same fabric that you find in Joann's and other, in other places. So it's like, I like the uniqueness. So I always like to go there. And at the same time, I kind of like it because I feel like, you know, you're supporting a small business. So, you know, I'm pretty big on that. So, you know, they are sometimes a little more pricier, but the way I look at it is, you know, it's like, you know, it's you're getting a unique piece of fabric that not everybody else has. So, you know, to me, it's worth it, you know. So um, I like going to Joann's um, and I do like going to the local sewing shop. Now, Walmart. I like going there for the little fat quarters at like 97 cents or a dollar fifty, right? Um, me and my sister were talking the other day and she said she likes to buy like the two yard. Um, I know what she's talking about. Um, I had bought some of those because I had no choice. I had to buy those because they were out of fabric. I don't know if you guys um uh, remember, because I know now they're pretty stocked up. But when the pandemic first hit, it looked like a madhouse. And it was like their shelves were completely, completely empty. You couldn't find fabric anywhere. So um, I saw that the guy had just showed up with like a box of black um, two-yard fabric. And I ended up buying a couple, you know, grabbing a couple of those and bringing it home. But I didn't like the fabric. When I, when I opened it up, you know, it felt like paper. It didn't feel really good. So I was just like, mm, I won't be buying that again. So, you know, um, I'm very particular about it. A lot of times when I go to Joanne, um, the fabric that I kind of pick is usually premium um, fabric. 
I like the cotton fabric too. You know, I, I always feel it. I don't know what it is. I got to touch it. I got to feel it. I, I want to see what it, what it feels like because a lot of times when I, you know, when I feel it, it's, it's like, if it feels good, usually I know that it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be nice for me to use as applique because if you're using it as applique, sometimes it's on clothes and stuff like that. And depending on what you're using it, I like it to feel good. Like for example, um, I, I sold this wallet. It's, 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 uh, the diva wallet. I bought the course from, um, crafty Gemini.com. I really like her channel. She's very, very good. Um, and I like her, her courses because she's very, very step by step. So I made this, um, wallet using her course. And, um, I gotta tell you, I love the fabric. This is the premium fabric from Joann's and I love the feel of it. And then on the inside, I used um, purple, and I know it looks kind of blue because right now it looks kind of blue, but this is really purple. I don't know why the, the color's changing, but it, there's sparkles on it. And I kind of like this type of fabric because I just think that it's really, really cute. So it's a wallet that I made for myself. Um, and uh, what I was doing was what I did for this is I also, I made this, and then I, I made a face mask of the same fabric. From my mom you know so this was like um pretty cool so anyway but you know fabric is kind of important to me what's really important is the feel right so i always like to go into joann's and i'm always feeling the fabric and because when i bought that black fabric i really it was all they had so i just like got like three of them and stuff and um my sister says she likes them so i kind of i have a package for because I, I never used it so I just said you can have it. So, you know, I guess she likes to practice and stuff like that. So um, a lot of times also things that um, I use like supplies, like stabilizers and everything. I usually like to get those from Amazon. The reason being is, first of all, you know, the shipping is so fast. And um, I'm really big on the reading of the reviews, right? Um, but sometimes you really got to eh, kind of take it for a grain of salt. I mean... If, if I see a product out there has like three stars or less, then to me, I kind of stay away from it. But if I see that there's a rating of like four stars or more, then I'll kind of look at it a little more because the simple reason sometimes people just, you know, they, it just didn't work for them and they, they blame the product and it's sometimes like a, a user error, right? So um, when it comes to my threads, I really do like the Madeira brand. Um, I do use the Sim threads a lot. The only thing that, the only issues I have with the Sim thread has nothing to do with the quality of the thread or anything. It's just that I really wish I could get my hands on some large combs, okay? Um, and that is the whole reason, honestly, why I geared sometimes towards the Madeira. Because the Madeira, I can get the large combs. With the sim threads, every time I look, um, they have the small combs. Sometimes they have them with a little more, but I kind of like the big ones because I feel like with the big ones, you really do save, especially for the colors that you use a lot. And talk about colors. I want to tell you something. Um, a customer reached out to me and I'm going to be working on a lap tape, lap, uh, lap tape lap case for her, okay, and I'm going to be embroidering um, her lap case, and she asked for the color, which I was kind of like, oh, I don't have that color, but I'm getting it, though, um, Tiffany blue, so it's like, you know, the Tiffany box, Tiffany blue, so when she asked for that color, I was kind of like, oh, you know, I thought about it, and I was like, in all the sets that I brought, Okay, in with scent thread and even with the 260 uh sprues of embroidery thread that I got from Thread Nanny, there is no Tiffany blue. So I had to actually go on Amazon and I was able to find it. And now I'm looking at allstitch.com. I go to allstitch.com too, and I know I'm rambling and I am throwing stuff, you know, like little things but you know you, like I said you guys can play those back all stitch um all stitch.com is another good one they're the ones where I get my Madeira thread 
the big combs, I find them cheaper. And I'm going to tell you, when, when you look at the prices, if you go on Amazon um, and you look at the prices on Amazon, sometimes go to All Stitch and you're going to see that the same thread, the big comb, is cheaper on AllStitch.com. Now, the only catch, though, is with AllStitch.com, you have to spend like $150 in order to get the free shipping. And then when I put it in a shopping cart and I see how much the shipping costs, I'm like, I could have got another thread comb, you know? So it kind of, you know, like I said, you know, it, it kind of, I like to see where my money's going and stuff. So some kind of like, mm. So then I'll add more stuff to the cart um, of stuff that I know that I, I need, like I need bobbins and, or stabilizer or stuff like that. And I'll throw that stuff in there. So anyway, um, yeah, something else. Oh, talk about pricing. Um, as, as I put in there, um, I actually treated myself today. I got a, a surger, never had a surger before. Um, you know, so I, I want one. So I went and I purchased a brother, I think it's a 1034 DX. The D, the, it's the latest model of the serger. I went on Amazon today to look for it. They had them priced at 240 and some were 250. I even saw one at 280. And then um, I just did a Google uh, and I found that Walmart had it for 199. And next day shipping, free shipping. So I was like, oh, so I got it through Walmart. And then what I did also is I went through that Ebates link and stuff, got uh, extra 1% uh, cash back. So, you know, my my whole thing is be money conscious. You know, like, you know what you want. You know what you want. You're looking for thread. You're looking for a particular color. You're looking for stabilizer. You know what kind of stabilizer you want. Um, You know, when you go to the sites and you type them in and you know how much it costs and stuff, one of the good things to do is if you go to Google and then you just type the product in, sometimes you could find that the same exact product is sometimes cheaper somewhere else. So it's just something I want to throw out there. Okay, so, you know, I ended up not ordering my surgery from um, Amazon. I ended up ordering it from Walmart because, I mean, to me, that was like a $60 difference. And there's a lot of thread I could buy with $60, a lot of stabilizers and stuff like that. So to me, it was it was worth going to Walmart. Um, I also wanted to mention um, furniture, okay? Um, people have um, been, you know, talking a lot about this dream box that's out there, right? It's like, um, it is, it's nice. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it looks really, really nice. Um, but... This is the thing, and I, and I even posted it up there on, on uh, Facebook. I go, okay, I did look at that, and when I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's really, really pretty, it, you know, because it looks like a, a little box, and then you just open it up, and then you have all these shelves and stuff. This is the thing that really got me, that price, $3,000 for a dream box. So this is the only thing, I was talking to my husband about it, and I, and I told him, I said, it's really, really nice. And he's like, get it. And I'm kind of like, oh, Fred, that's $3,000, you know? And he's like, well, it's a tax write-off. And I'm like, yeah, it's a tax write-off for the business and stuff. I can do that. But I was like, to me, I could just see $3,000. Um, I, I could I could do more than, you know, I could, I, my, my, my uh, third embroidering machine, I can apply the $3,000 towards that. You know, I was just like, I don't know. When I looked at the dream box, in all honesty, and, you know, um, I just feel like it's, it's just it's just bookshelves with um, clear bits, right? And um, I, a lot of my furniture that you see here, I got a lot from Ikea, okay? Ikea is very affordable. Um, you know, it is put together furniture, but you know what? The dream box is put together furniture too, unless you pay an extra five hundred dollars. Because I looked at that, and what and and thing is, when you buy that, it's um five hundred dollars, and it's not even all put together, okay? Because it just they put together some of it, and then when it gets to your house, then you have to finish it off. So I got to be honest, when I started pricing that whole thing, and then I said, okay, well, what if you put to half of it together for me? I just have a hard time swallowing spending that amount of money on 
on that. I just, I mean, I, I mean, if you want to, that's, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Okay. That's just me. Um, I could see myself going to Ikea because if you got to put it together yourself anyway, you might as well get Ikea, get the shelves. Um, you really like those plastic containers. Well, um, I think there's something called container store where you could go on Amazon and I bet you, you could get the same plastic containers and just, it looks the same. Okay. And honestly, I think you would end up with more room because when you look at that dream box, um, it, it looks like a cabinet. But the thing is, you got to remember, there are doors in front of that, of, in, in front of that bookcase. So, you know, it, it, it's probably very, very long. OK, so it's probably very wide. All right. It's not, you know, and if you were to get bookcases, that would be very flush on your wall. So it's just something I wanted to put out there, you know, um, cause I know that you know, people were asking about it. People were posting about it and stuff. And I do see a lot of folks out there on YouTube, you know, some people are getting it and they're like, Oh my God, I got my dream box. something like that. And you got to remember too, some of, some of these folks that buy that dream box, they do write it off in their taxes. Okay. So, cause they have a business. So if you have a business, and, and you want to buy it and write it off on your taxes. And you, that's, you know, that's okay. You know what I mean? You can do that. Me personally, though, for, for me, I, I just don't, I don't see it. You know, I mean, you know, believe me, I was ooh and eyeing about it too. But I, it just wasn't something that really was like, eh, I gotta have it. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like you look at something and then the practical side of you kind of goes in and then you're like, okay, you know, is it worth it? the money, you know, and stuff. So it, it just wasn't something that I just saw that is, as, as really worth it for that amount of money. I mean, that's a huge amount of money to me. That's a, that's a lot. Okay. Um, so it's like, you just, I, I don't know. It's just me. It's just me. Don't get mad. You know, if you want it, go get it. But you know, it's just, you know, let's just say I'm not the type of person that if you if I went to the store with you and you put on a dress and it didn't look good, you don't want me there because I'll let you know you don't look good. You know, <laughs> I'm just that honest, you know. I mean, I'll say you could buy it, but you know, hmm, you know, okay, you know, that's just me, okay? Cause I would be like, Oh, okay, that's nice. Well, you know, you could have got a bunch of stabilizer, you could have got thread, you could have got you know, you that could have been a nice down payment on a multi needle machine, or you know how many you know how many SC nineteen hundreds you could have got with that machine. You know, with that money, you could own three. You know, so it's just, it's just I don't know. It's you know, you could tell I probably piss off some of my friends. You know, <laughs> you know, I mean that's just you know. So let me see. I want to make sure that I cover everything because I know I am getting to that hour and stuff. And the la and last week, boy, I talked uh, too too much. I think. Um, let's see. So okay, embroidery files. I gave you some sites that I know I have purchased from. Um, another thing too. Um, it, if you go to embrilliance.com, and I'm not talking about buying the software. What I'm talking about is just going to their website. You go over to the left hand side, okay, and they say it, you're gonna see like a little section. It says bx um what is it okay bx font designers you're gonna see a whole list of embroidery websites so even if you don't have in brilliance i strongly recommend just go to the website and just look at that section so that way you can look at all these other um places where you can buy embroidery files okay and this is not just to buy these are not just websites that sell BX fonts. They do sell it, but they have other designs as well. So, you know, so a lot of these um, these places that I mentioned, they're listed on there. So, you know, it's it's a really good place. I mean, you know, I tried to print out the file from them, but it did come out too good on my printer. But this is this gives you an idea. This is just one page of all these companies that sell embroidery files. So, you know, it's 
you know, even if you don't have the software, I mean, I, I just think it's awesome that they have that out there. So I think you should just go to the website and then right on the, the left-hand side at the bottom, you'll see it says BX Font Designers. Just click on that. You're going to see a whole list of places where you can buy different embroidery files. I mean, there, you know, embroidery files, there's just so many out there and stuff. The only thing that I say is, just make sure that you read and understand what you're buying, you know, um, make sure that you're getting the right size and you're getting the right format because if not, then you're, you're kind of screwed. And, you know, well, you're not really screwed because, um, like I said, embroiderydesigns.com was, was really nice. I, and I don't even think they had to do that because I should have read the fine print. You know, that was not their fault. It was all mine, but they were really nice and they did help me out and stuff because I was. And then that's when I, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I, I got to really learn this stuff, you know, and stuff. But, um, yeah. Oh, and here's another one. Oh, my crafty supplies. They're on their list, too. That's another place that I have gone and I've looked. I don't think I bought anything from them, but I have um, I have seen some of their stuff and they, their stuff seems pretty good. But they have a really, really cute uh, list. Not cute, you know, long list of um, different types of websites that you can go to if you're looking for embroidery files and stuff. And as for supplies, like I mentioned, allstitch.com has been a good favorite of mine. I'm just not a fan of the, of the, the you got to spend $150 to get free shipping. So I usually, what I usually do when I go to allstitch.com is I wait till I have a long list of items that I need to buy, a bunch of stabilizers and threads and all that kind of stuff. And then I put my order in. Um, that's the only thing I don't like about them. Um, let me see. And, you know, like I said, I love going to the um, Etsy shops. For embroidery files, that one um, embroidery shop that I mentioned, Marsha Embroidery, her prices are awesome. I mean, she's just like, um, her prices are really, really, really good. You know, because, I mean, it's like a dollar. So that's like so cool. So I I know I really, um, you know, to me, that's really cheap. <laughs> that's really good. I mean, you could... You, you know, think about all the embroidery files that you could buy with three thousand dollars. I mean, damn, that's a lot. You know, I mean, it's like you could buy the whole website of embroidery files for two thousand dollars. So it's just, you know, it's just something. You know, um, but yeah, and you know, if you're if you're thinking about the um the dream box and stuff, um, take a trip to IKEA. Yeah, you know, that's all. Kind of like, you know, <laughs> you're going to see it's a lot cheaper. I mean, if you got to put it together yourself anyway. And I think with Ikea also, if I remember correctly, if you don't want to put the furniture together, you can pay them for them to send someone, I think, to your house to put it together for you. I think you can do that. And so I could have swore I saw that. So if you really think about it, you know, that's not bad. And you still save money. I mean, I bet you, you, you would not have spent the $3,000. So I don't know. I guess I'm kind of like trying to tell you guys, don't do it. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just, it's just a lot. I don't know. It's just a lot and stuff. And, you know, I know a lot of you guys are, are starting out. I think that's, that's why it's like, you know, you a lot of you guys bought the the SC nineteen hundred, and it's you know it's not a cheap machine, okay? It's a thousand dollars, okay? And embroidery is an expensive hobby. You're buying the files, you're buying the stabilizer, you're buying the thread, and then you're buying the products to go ahead and, and you know and embroider. And you know it's so it, I don't know. I mean, if you got it. Okay, but I, I'm just, you know, it's just to me, it's like I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I, I just don't want you guys to to be spending on stuff that, you know, eh, you know, I, I don't, you know, a lot of times people can go in financial debt and stuff like that. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Just, just be careful with your money, okay? You know, we're in hard times and stuff like that, you know, and a lot of times people, 
you know, um, right now they're, they're into sewing and all that stuff. A lot of people lost their jobs and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just, you know, I just happen to care. That's all. I, I just, you know, if, if you have it great and, and you know, and, and if you don't, I, I don't feel bad, you know, you can do something just the same and sometimes even nicer because you can get creative with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause I, I'm going to be honest, you know, that dream box gave me some ideas because now when I look at this, I'm kind of like, hmm, I could use something like that. <laughs> but I'm not going to spend $3,000. I'll probably do an uh, Ikea thing. So I don't know. I'll, and knowing me, um, you know, because I'm like so over putting furniture together, I'll probably pay Ikea to do it. So if I decide to do that, I'll probably do a video of the whole thing. So you guys can see how I do my own dream box. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I mean. We'll just see how it is. But anyway, guys, I mean, it was just a small thing, you know, for today and stuff. I wanted to throw some some websites out there, you know, for you guys to look at and everything. If you guys are interested, you know, in um, or, you know, kind of like stump on, you know, where to get your embroidery files from and stuff um, and supplies and everything like that. Um, I do have my own, um, you know, I have a, a Amazon storefront, um, and all the stuff that I put in the storefront is actually stuff that I use. I do not add stuff in there that I don't use or don't know anything about. Okay. Um, one of the things too, is I, I highly recommend if you, you, if you, when you look at those items that, that I have on there, you know, you don't have to buy what I put out there. You know what I'm saying? Just look for the best price, okay? Look for the best product for you and your project and stuff like that. So I just want to, you know, let you guys know and stuff. But, you know, if you're looking for recommendations and stuff like that, you can go to my Amazon storefront. It's in the description of the video. And, um, you know, if you have questions, if you go to the Facebook group, I'm pretty active on there. So, you know, you can just... Give me a shout out and say, hey, Jeanette, you know, can you tell me more about this or that? Or, or, you know, does this work or do you have an alternative? I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. OK, so anyway, I'm thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really do look forward to talking to you guys on Fridays at eight and stuff, especially now. Like, you know, Fred's gone, Cardio's gone and the dog's sleeping. Just me, me and my embroidery machine. So anyway. <laughs> So I will talk to you guys later and stuff. You guys have a good, good night. Thank you so much for joining me and stuff. I really appreciate all the support and everything. If you guys need anything, have any questions, need help, please reach out and stuff. Um, I am usually very responsive and stuff. And if I can't help you out, I will try my best to try to get you the help that you need, um, you know, and try to figure stuff out, okay? So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, I see right now I'm at 2,800 subscribers, which I think is like pretty, pretty cool. You know, my goal, which my husband's kind of like, I don't know if you can do that. I was kind of like, would be cool if I get to 10,000, but you know, at the end of this year, but um, he's kind of like, he thinks I'm probably maybe, you know, setting it a little bit too high. You know, he's thinking maybe 5,000. I don't know, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see where, where I am in December and stuff. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed all the information. Happy um, sewing, happy embroidering, and please be safe out there. So I'll see you guys next Friday. And if you have any ideas about videos that you want me to do and stuff like that, just put them over to the Facebook group. And if you don't know what the Facebook group is, it's um, Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. Okay, so please join us and stuff. So I will talk to you guys later. You guys have a great, great night. And please be safe. Talk to you later. Bye.